biggest hospitals in our area, Long Island College Hospital. It's been around for 150 years during its history. Rosanna Scott was born there. That's right. I have an affinity for Long Island College Hospital. Uh, lots of people do, but it is on the verge of closure. In fact, it's been ordered closed, I believe, by the uh, by various medical authorities, but there is resistance from the community and from the people who work there. There are 2,000 employees who stand potentially to lose their jobs if this hospital in Brooklyn closes down. Yeah, we have two doctors who work there right now, Dr. Uh, Tom Sora and John Romanelli, both served as past presidents of the medical staff at Long Island College Hospital. Nice to have you here. Thanks for Sorry having under these circumstances. You've gone to court now to try to stop them from closing the Long Island College Hospital. Where do you stand? Well, we, uh, we've gone to court twice. We've won twice. Uh, uh, the judge has ordered that May 2nd there be a, a hearing. He has also ordered that the SUNY downstate, who is running Long Island College Hospital for the past two years, re uh, release all the financial records which they have thus far not released, which makes it very difficult for anybody looking at the hospital to really assess are you doing well or not. And uh, the numbers that are being floated out is that Long Island College Hospital is losing a million dollars a week. Well, they're frankly, they're incorrect and they're bogus and because uh, uh, among other things, SUNY Downstate took over Long Island College Hospital from Continuum Health Partners a year and a half, two years ago. And as part of that deal, Continuum retained the rights to do billing and IT services for Long Island College Hospital until 2015 for two to three million dollars a month. Wow. Well, wow. Dr. Romanelli, well, if the hospital isn't losing money, why are they saying it's losing money? That's a tough question to answer because we don't have the financials. We haven't had financial information on Long Island College Hospital for over a year. You know, the hospital inherited a debt of $300 when it was transferred to SUNY Downstate. So basically when, when the hospitals merged, that's when the debt the was debt incurred? Could, it, well, the debt was there. The $300 million that we know of, we're questioning it because we don't know anything about the finances. We never got information from the finances. We actually hired a financial firm to help us with the finances and get us going forward. And we foiled the information, and unfortunately, we don't have that information coming to us until May 1st, so me day before the court date. Wow, so meanwhile, the court so far has ruled in your favor, saying the hospital has to stay open. But meanwhile, you're getting limited in supplies, I'm hearing. It's hard to even get a paper clip at Long Island College Hospital these days. And they're limiting surgeries, is that true? They're preventing um, surgeons from doing elective surgery after April 30th. We have a number of cases of C-sections that are going to be uh, coming forward in the next two months, and they won't allow the obstetricians to schedule any C-sections after April 30th. How many patients are treated there? How many beds does this hospital have? This bed, the hospital has over 500 beds, and what we did through the Department of Health is compress the beds to about 250. And we're usually about 90% capacity at any given time. We see about 200,000 visits in the emergency room a year. We've delivered 1,900 children at Long Island College in the past year. The ORs are 90 to 100 percent full whenever the OR dates are scheduled. So we're a busy hospital. We'll continue to do work. How do the people in the community feel about this? Well, you know, the, 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 this, if this hospital were to close, you, you know, I, I think that it would affect fine, it would affect the doctors, it would affect the nurses, it would affect the other employees, but most of all it would affect the communities. And and you know, you would take this hospital out of that out of where it sits and you would absolutely deprive an entire swath of downtown Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn those, uh, the court system, all the high rises, Barclays Center, you know, everything has been built there, serving thousands and thousands of people, new people living there, and you take this hospital out, where the heck are they going to go? We, there was a case uh, just recently where uh, a 14 year old, 13, 14 year old uh, uh, had cardiac arrest four blocks from the hospital. It took them two minutes to get to save the kid. You know, if this kid had to be taken to the other nearest hospital, Methodist or Brooklyn, it's another eight to ten minutes the kid might have died. So those are the kinds of things we're all worried about. All right, well, it's not a done deal yet, you gentlemen. Uh, we well, others are fighting. fighting this. Is, I just wonder, yeah. is, is the land worth more? Is that they want to sell it Absolutely. for condos? Absolutely. Or, that's what Absolutely. it is. That area is hot. They Absolutely. want it for... And, and, and the area is so crowded as it is. We put in a housing development there, and we don't have a hospital to work at it. Who knows what's going to happen to those people in that neighborhood. Dr. Romanelli, what's your specialty? Internal medicine. Dr. Sora? Gastroenterology. 
Good you're answer. at 50 and you don't need a colonoscopy, so. Is so, that when you recommend? I heard, you know. At 50. 50? Okay, yeah. good. I hear it's uh, rather unpleasant. No, it's not that at all. The, pre <laughs> the prep is tough. The, the prep is the worst part. The procedure's easy. <laughs> See you in uh, many years. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Right, so anyway, thanks for having good us. Good luck and keep thank us you. up to date on the court Thank fight. you very much. We will. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, we will be right back. Hmm?